So if you have your Bible, let's, let's dive into the scripture where Jesus in John chapter 16 verse 7, he says the following, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So Jesus is telling his disciples who just got used to him, they have seen him perform miracles, they have seen him, I mean Jesus has been a great example. Jesus was like the big deal for them. And toward the end of his ministry, three and a half years, Jesus looks at his disciple and says, hey guys, just giving you a heads up, it's actually going to be better if I'm going to leave. Now I understand it's in red, so it's Jesus' words. And I understand it's, prop, it's, it's the truth, amen? But there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that's the truth. You're reading and you're like, uh, I'm not sure about that. Because let's, let's be real. If Jesus would have been on earth right now, it would have been incredible. If he would have been in Israel, I would be the first person buying the ticket, getting the local hotel over there, and I would not be a Christian trying to get to Jesus. I will cut corners. I will push people probably. I would lose my Christianity and trying to get to Jesus. And then once I get to Jesus, I will ask you for forgiveness, of course. <laughs> right? We will all do that. But think about this. Jesus was on earth for three and a half years. Most of the people who were religious never embraced him. Actually, crucified him. What makes you think you wouldn't be those people? Since we're religious. The people who were his followers for three and a half years, you would think their life would be changed. Most of them, the Bible says, many of them got offended at him and left him. The ones who didn't get offended denied him and one guy took his own life. So, having Jesus physically around us, we saw the results. Jesus actually is, there's a fact that what Jesus is saying, it's better that I leave because when the Holy Spirit will come in and we see the results of the coming of the Holy Spirit, book of Acts shows us that these cowards, these offended people, these religious people, the Pharisees, the Pharisees were being saved. People who are his followers were being transformed to go from being cowards to being courageous. Their life was being transformed and changed. They shook the world upside down. None of them took their life. They laid their life down for Christ. There is power in the Holy Spirit. Somebody did some math and they, they came to this conclusion that if Jesus could physically minister 14 hours a day to people, and 14 hours a day is a lot of work. Some of us who work, you know, 10 hours and four days a week, it's a lot of work. 14 hours a day. If he could see people for 60 seconds, one person, 60 seconds. He would be able to see about 840 people in one day. But how many of you agree you need more than 60 seconds? Because the problems you got with your wife is like you need six hours to explain why she's wrong, why he's wrong. The crazy kids, what about the neighbors? You know, what about the other people, the relatives, the family members? We need more than 60 seconds. So, but let's just imagine you would have 60 seconds with Jesus. If that would be possible, if Jesus would have, be, would have been on this earth, you know that it would take Jesus two million years to see seven billion people for 60 seconds. Jesus says, it's better that I leave because when the Holy Spirit will come in you can call him anytime for no reason not for 60 seconds for six seven hours every single day if you want to he will always be available and he will use you he will impact you and Jesus said this works I do he said when the Holy Spirit will come in there will be greater works because they will not be done just through one person they will be done through many people today God is moving in this world that's why book of Acts doesn't have a man at the end because the acts of the Holy Spirit are still continuing through you, through me and through the church in this world. Can somebody say amen? amen. God is still moving. God is still healing people. God is still saving people. God is still changing people. God is still breaking the chains of people's lives. God is still reconciling people. God is still resurrecting people and reconciling people. Can somebody say praise God? And so right now we're going to dive in and look at the example that Jesus left us of what it's like to walk with Holy Spirit. What it's like to live with the Holy Spirit. What it's, because sometimes we can look at 
preachers, pastors, your own life and start to develop doctrine from our experiences which is dangerous. We have to develop and derive our doctrine from the Word of God and from the example of Jesus. Jesus is the perfect theology. Jesus is the standard. Not even David from the Bible. Not even Apostle Paul and Peter. These guys are great. Their lifestyle is great. We imitate them as they imitate Christ. But Jesus is it. Can somebody say amen? And so I want you to write down number one is that Jesus was born by the Holy Spirit. Jesus was born by the Holy Spirit. Jesus' birth was conceived supernaturally by the Holy Spirit. His birth was natural. He was born naturally, but he was conceived supernaturally by the Holy Spirit. In Matthew chapter 1 verse 18, it says the following. Now the birth of Jesus Christ were as is followed. After his mother Mary was betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with the child of the Holy Spirit. This may sound kind of crazy, but the Holy Spirit was Jesus' biological father. He was his father. The Holy Spirit was the one that gave Jesus that birth. Now Jesus is not the only one who had Holy Spirit as his father. When you got born again, the Holy Spirit became your father. Because we were born from the Holy Spirit. Amen. First time when we got born, the Bible says that we were born with a sinful nature called flesh. So on your first birthday, the devil has given you a gift and you have opened that gift and been using ever since. It's called the flesh. The flesh is this bad thing within us that wants to do bad. When you get born again, when you get saved, when you give your life to Jesus Christ, when you surrender your evil ways to the Lord, you put your faith in Jesus as your only way and the only salvation, God the Father not only gives you a new heart, not only He writes your name in the book of life, not only He gives you gift of righteousness, not only He gives you adoption, you become His child, but God the Father gives you a gift at that moment called the Holy Spirit. Not when you start speaking in tongues, not when you get your act together, not when you stop cussing, not when you stop smoking, not when you stop sleeping around, but the moment you get saved, in that moment the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of you. Can somebody say amen? amen. And so now we have a problem. As exciting as that is, because we got flesh with our first birth, we got the Holy Spirit with our second birth, we got a conflict inside. Your salvation doesn't solve problems, it creates conflict. Because before it was easy, it was just the flesh. Now we have the flesh and the Holy Spirit. You don't live a holy life because you have the Holy Spirit. You have the Holy Spirit to have a potential for a holy life. But it's yielding to the Holy Spirit that brings holiness. Yielding to the Holy Spirit that brings victories. It explains why many Christians still live defeated lives even though they are genuinely born again. Because being genuinely born again doesn't give Holy Spirit automatic control. It gives Him a presence inside of you but it's still your part to yield to the Holy Spirit or to yield to the flesh in my house you know I have my wife in my house I sleep with my wife praise be to God amen <laughs> but there is there is one more female that lives in our house and she helps us with the house she helps she runs a few teams in our church and we help her with that and she is a friend she is an acquaintance but she is not my wife I am not close to her hi bye how you doing that's about it but my wife I am close with I am intimate with I share my life with and that's kind of like how it is inside of you there's a flesh who can be a roommate because you can't get rid of your flesh, you're going to have to constantly crucify it and then it gets resurrected next day. Your flesh doesn't disappear. You can't cast out your flesh. It's always going to be there as long as you live. You just have to learn not to be intimate with your flesh. But you have to be close with the Holy Spirit. And many of us, we have the Holy Spirit as a roommate, but the person we're really intimate with is the flesh. And we think having a Christian bumper sticker or going to a church or even passing a growth track or even speaking in tongues, it automatically makes you victorious. Actually, who are you, quote unquote, sleeping with? Who are you intimate with? Who are you close with will determine whether you will live a holy life or a sinful life. Amen. Having the Holy Spirit is great. But when the Holy Spirit has you, it's best. Amen. When you were born, physically, you came with legs right away. 
you were born with legs. Legs came as part of the package. God, the creator, gave you legs, not as a reward for learning how to speak. It was a gift. But learning to walk with the legs you got took some time, some practice, patience, falling and getting up, right? None of us walked out of our mother's womb. <laughs> None of us walked out of the hospital. Walked out like, what's up, Dad? Good to see y'all. Let's get ready. What are we doing here? None of us did that. We, we were crawling for months. We were crawling. We had the legs. We had the potential. They could carry us. I mean, yes, they were a little fragile, a little chunky and chubby, but, but they had the potential to carry us. Instead, we dragged our legs everywhere. They were, they were there. They were given to us, but we didn't know how to walk in them until it took us some time. And we were so lucky because we were surrounded by people who learned how to use their legs. Because if we would be surrounded by our mom and dad who still crawled, we would crawl all our life thinking that's normal. See, when you were born again, Holy Spirit is like legs. God gave him as a gift auto automatically. But to walk in the Holy Spirit takes some time, takes practice, takes surrender, takes paying attention to the Holy Spirit, takes acting on the prompting stakes, learning the scriptures. And the best benefit is when you're surrounded with other people who walk in the Holy Spirit. Because if you come to a church or you come to an environment where everyone has the Holy Spirit but they still crawl in flesh, you will think that's normal Christian life and you will never take advantage of the gift of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Many of you, you carry the Holy Spirit. I want to challenge you today to allow the Holy Spirit to carry you. Don't be like that lame man in book of Acts who the Bible says he was brought to the temple. He had the legs, they just didn't walk. And that's why he was never in the temple, he was outside of the temple and he was not there praising God, he was there begging. But when Peter came, Peter didn't give him legs. He just gave him his hand and he says, listen, get up. And the strength came into the legs he had. And he got inside and inside of the church he wasn't begging, though he still had the same problems. He still didn't have a job. He still needed money, but he was praising God. He was worshiping God. See, when you learn to walk in the Holy Spirit, you will still have challenges in life, but your attitude is going to be different. You don't have to be bribed to come to church. You don't have to be brought to church. You will come to church by yourself because you got the legs. You got the Holy Spirit because you walk with God.